anyone who has a kid or has been a kid knows how easy it is to come up with some excuse for any situation. It's really not that hard. It's actually a skill set that all of us, everybody on the planet possesses. Some excuses better than others, some excuses more legitimate than others. But in the case of the Sacramento Kings, excuses are no longer valid, nor are they wanted from both the fan perspective and the team perspective. I could make a ton of excuses for the Kings' poor performance in their loss to the Memphis Grizzlies last night, but I'm going to tell you why excuses don't matter, why this team doesn't need or want excuses, and we're going to talk about accountability when it comes to both De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton in particular, plus we will rank six players and which players we would like to see traded and which players we would like to see the Kings hold on to. It's all on today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast. You are Locked On Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time, time for another episode of Locked On Kings. Hello and welcome to Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. If you're looking for in-depth analysis, game-by-game breakdowns, highlights, interviews with local and national experts, full coverage of your Sacramento Kings from January through December, this is the place for you, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And today's episode is brought to you by Truebill. Truebill is the new app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop paying for the subscriptions that you don't want or need. They can even negotiate better deals on those that you want to keep. They'll tell you a little bit more about Truebill later on in the show. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I've been a Sacramento Sports Media member for the last seven years. This is my eighth season covering the Kings, formerly with Sports Lum 40 KHDK Radio in Sacramento, now with ABC 10 Television. And I apologize for the uh, the short podcast yesterday, the short episode of Locked On Kings. Uh, as many of you heard at the end of the podcast, or maybe you saw if you're watching on YouTube, uh, I received a phone call uh, midway through the podcast about my uh, my wife being involved in a minor car accident. She's fine. Everything's fine. We're back to normal. Uh, and uh, my baby also happened to wake up at the same time. So instead of delaying the podcast and potentially not getting an episode out to you until super, super late, I decided to cut that episode short. It was only basically one segment, a couple ad reads. Did get into my frustrations, as you clearly heard, uh, with the Kings and their horrible performance against the Memphis Grizzlies. But I wanted to make sure I recorded another podcast here today uh, to get into a little more detail about some of the things that I was talking about and talk about some of the responses that I got to that podcast. I got a lot of uh, comments on YouTube, some emails of people saying like, Hey Matt, let's take it easy a little bit. Like the the Kings were uh, coming off of a triple overtime uh, battle against the Los Angeles Lakers. They were probably a little bit tired. They're down three starters and Harrison Barnes, Rashawn Holmes, and Mo Harkless. This excuse, that excuse, this excuse, that excuse for why the Kings would have a performance like that against the Memphis Grizzlies. And you know, sleeping on it and thinking about it, like I understand the arguments. I'm not here to disregard any of the arguments that are being said. My overall point in today's podcast, as I kind of laid out there during the intro, is you can make an excuse for everything that the Kings do negatively. We could come up with an excuse for every single game uh, as to why uh, the the Kings didn't perform or why they didn't live up to to the standards and expectations that we have on them and then that that they've, they've put on themselves. It's really not that hard. But this team no longer deserves or wants excuses. And that was made very clear by the expectations they put upon themselves, the goal for this season, which is playoffs or bust. And even if they've changed head coaches, even if Luke Walton is gone as one of the two major people that, that put that expectation on this team, the other was Monty McNair, general manager, Monty McNair, who is still here. That is going to be the bar. And I told you that coming into this season, that is the bar no matter what this year. That is the expectation. If the Kings don't live up to it, it's nothing short of a failure. Even if they decide to switch gears midseason, I've seen some Kings fans saying, hey, you know what? The Kings should consider really blowing this up and, and trying to rebuild again as if that didn't work the last few times. Although to, to some people's credit, like the Kings, I don't know if they've ever fully executed a, a, a full-on rebuild at any point uh, during this 15-year playoff trial. But I see some people saying like, 
Keep your draft pick. Trade away your assets as much as you can to get value in return. Try and get as good of a pick as you can in this upcoming draft and try again next year and see if we can start this over. I've seen people say that. Even if the Kings decide to go that route, which I think would be an absolute mistake, and I say that's like a 1% chance. I'd give it a less than 1% chance of that happening this season unless the Kings completely fall out of it. I'm talking like 20 games uh, back of a play-in spot by the trade deadline, which is not going to happen. Like the Kings are going to still be somewhat in the mix. And as long as they're in the mix, they're going to go for it. But even if they change directions mid-season, I would not change my bar, would not change my expectation because that was always the expectation for this year. So with that expectation, we know that this team has to overachieve in some areas and obviously had to improve. In some areas, they have improved. In a lot of areas, especially when it comes to individual players, they've regressed. And overall, they don't want or invite excuse making. I haven't heard players, coaches, anyone really making an excuse. I didn't hear anybody say, yeah, we were tired because of the Lakers game. That's why we played bad. Or, I mean, I, I've heard plenty of, and I know Kings fans used to get frustrated with Luke Walton starting his press conference and saying, hey, give that team credit, which, yeah, that, that annoyed me too, right? But Luke didn't make excuses. Even if De'Aaron Fox has had a piss poor attitude in a lot of his post-game press conferences and he said kind of the same thing, which is we need to do better, even though he's not doing that on the floor. I haven't heard De'Aaron make excuses. Tristan Thompson certainly hasn't made excuses. Tyrese Halliburton certainly hasn't made excuses. They've owned their mistakes. They haven't really improved on them that consistently, but they've owned them, said, we got to get better. This is on us. This is not on the coaches. This is on us. I haven't heard any excuse making from the team. So why am I hearing some from the, the, the fan base? Why is a fan base that has been tortured for over a decade, nearly two decades, why is that fan base making excuses for that piss poor product on the floor? You don't have to, even if you like the Kings. I like the Kings. I grew up a diehard fan of this team. I now cover the team professionally, which allows me to kind of separate myself from, uh, from, from being a fan a little bit. But even professionally, I want the Sacramento Kings to succeed and do well. It's better for me. You think I enjoy talking about a bad team all the time? You think it helps my numbers that I'm talking about a bad team all the time? I'm lucky that I get to host the Locked on Kings podcast for a fan base that's as loyal as this fan base is. Why is that fan base making an excuse for a performance like that loss against the Memphis Grizzlies? There, there is no excuse. I could try and make a ton. I listed out some of them earlier. You played triple overtime and De'Aaron Fox played over 50 minutes. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's important to bring up. Uh, you could talk about the three starters missing. You could talk about the, the Memphis Grizzlies wanting to respond after their blowout loss and, and wanting to make up for the fact that they're missing their star and John Morant and they're trying to play for him and they're a little energized by that. You can make up every excuse in the book for why the Kings lost that game. Those don't matter to me. And that does not give them a free pass for the performance that we saw. Because like I talked about in, in yesterday's pod, what we saw, it didn't matter that it was against the Grizzlies. It didn't matter that it was after a triple overtime win. It didn't matter that there was a different head coach in Alvin Gentry there instead of Luke Walton. It didn't matter that Harrison Barnes and Rashawn Holmes weren't playing. It doesn't matter who's on this roster. It doesn't matter who's coaching this team. Hell, it doesn't matter who's running the front office. What we saw in that game was exactly what we've seen over 15 years, which is the Kings playing well, getting a good win against a better opponent that they played up to the level to in the Los Angeles Lakers, although I know the Lakers aren't as good of a team as maybe they see, but obviously the Kings get up a little bit more and play a little bit harder. Clearly they did against the Lakers in Staples Center when they're playing LeBron James and Anthony Davis than they did against the Memphis Grizzlies team in a basically empty Grizzlies uh, arena, FedEx Forum, I think is what it's called, and John Morant's not playing. Like we can see how differently this team plays. You can see the effort. You can see the approach to the game, an 11-0 start the Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies got off to, and the Kings the entire night never really battled their way back from that. The fact that they looked lethargic, the fact that they looked slow, the fact that they looked disinterested, they were lazy on both ends of the floor, especially offensively. Shooting 42 three-pointers and making only like seven or eight or nine of them, I can't even remember the number. It was horrific. Like everything about that loss to the Memphis Grizzlies was just lazy. Why make an excuse? There's no excuse for everybody who was playing, playing lazy basketball, even if they are tired from the triple overtime win that was two days before. Or even if Harrison Barnes and Rashawn Holmes were playing. That's why I said yesterday, it wouldn't have made a difference if Rashawn Holmes and, and Harrison Barnes were playing because those two can't force the rest of the team to not play lazy basketball. 
So you can make excuses if you want. You can do everything. If it makes you feel better, you want to take that game and just roll up into a ball and chuck it over your shoulder into a trash can. If that makes you feel a little bit better and helps you move on with the season, hey, maybe that game was an anomaly. And like I said uh, on yesterday's pod, blowout losses are going to happen. But it's if you're going to get blown out, get blown out against a good team like the Phoenix Suns or Utah Jazz or the, the, the Milwaukee Bucks. But no, the Kings play good against those teams. They play up to that level of competition. Why get blown out against the teams that are beatable? And I'm not saying the Kings are, are better than the Memphis Grizzlies by any means. Even with John Morant out, that Memphis Grizzlies team, that's a good team. Like they got some good players. So I wouldn't necessarily say that the Kings got their ass kicked by a terrible team or a team much worse than them. Not at all. That's a team that is close to even with them. But they don't play to their level. They don't play as hard or with as much effort and intensity and focus as they do in a night game, 7.30 p.m. start in Los Angeles. That's the problem. There are no excuses for that, in my opinion. Especially when we've seen that way too many times over the course of this entire playoff drought. We're going to talk about De'Aaron Fox, because when I talk about lazy play, De'Aaron Fox is at the top of that list, especially defensively with what he's done recently. But in in that Memphis game, man, De'Aaron looked horrific. I also want to talk about Tyrese Halliburton. Why is Tyrese afraid to shoot the basketball? We're going to touch on that. And uh, I put it out on Twitter today. I, I listed six Sacramento Kings players. And I asked for uh, fans to rank those players from who you'd most like to see traded to who you'd least like to see traded. And that doesn't mean you want to see all of them traded or, or any of them traded. Just who, if, if, if you were Monty McNair, I guess, who would you be shopping hardest versus who would you be trying to keep out of the six players? I'll name the six players for you so you can start thinking about this a little bit because we'll touch on this next segment. De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heal, Davion Mitchell, Marvin Bagley, and Harrison Barnes. Those are the six players. So think about that. Rank your most likely to move or who you'd try to move the most versus who you'd try and keep out of those six players. And we'll discuss that in a little bit. Right now, though, I'll tell you a little bit more about our title sponsor of the Lockdown Kings podcast. That, of course, is Truebill. Do you know why free trials renew without your uh, consent? It's a business scam. They're just trying to get the money out of you without you really realizing it. Don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions. Subscriptions five, 10 years ago, right? There's only maybe one or two. The longest subscription that I've had, for example, is Spotify. I've paid for it uh, for the last eight years since college. But now I've got a thousand subscriptions, it seems like. They're hard to keep track of them all. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. You link your accounts, Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. That's it. Your Truebill concierge is also there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to go through all of that hassle. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Go right now to Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. It could save you thousands a year. Darren Fox has been frustrating to say the absolute least this season. Confusing. Concerning. When it comes to the expectations that we had for this Kings team and the expectations for De'Aaron Fox, they're very closely intertwined because even if we thought this roster got better, even if we had high hopes for Tyrese Halliburton in his second year, uh, Davion Mitchell was supposed to come in and be a, a defensive juggernaut for this Kings team. Uh, bringing back Mo Harkless, bringing back Terrence Davis, signing Alex Len, uh, Buddy Heald playing up to the level of his contract, Harrison Barnes continuing to, to play at the high level that he provided for the Kings really for half of last season. Even with all those expectations outside of De'Aaron Fox, we always knew that the Kings were only really going to go as far as De'Aaron took them. And if De'Aaron took another leap in addition to what he did last season, that this team would more than certainly be in the playoff conversation and that De'Aaron would probably be an all-star. But even if he just stayed the same, which some of us would have been disappointed with, but not horrible, if he had just stayed the same with what he did, did last season, not really regressed, not really progressed, maybe minor things here or there, that this Kings team would definitely be in the play in and De'Aaron still might be in the all-star conversation, even if he didn't make it last year. Instead, and there's no really other way to put this, De'Aaron Fox has regressed completely. Completely. 
The player that we know De'Aaron Fox to be is not here. We haven't seen it this season. We've seen flashes. We've seen stretches. We've seen moments like him going coast to coast in three seconds like he used to do every game. Now he's done it once in a month. De'Aaron's not the same. And it's not just in the areas where we knew he already struggled, like three-point shooting, free throw shooting, uh, in, in uh, defensively. It's his strengths, the speed, the burst, the explosiveness that made De'Aaron Fox who he is, that made him so unique, that made him the star last season and the top pick for the Kings that he ended up becoming. Has anybody seen that? There have been flashes. There have been moments. But it, only, it honestly looks like De'Aaron Fox is 32 years old. He's playing like he's 32 years old. That Back when he was younger, he could do things like that. And at 32, every once in a while, he turns back the clock and gives you those moments. But that's really not his game anymore. That's what De'Aaron looks like. De'Aaron doesn't look like the the, the 24, 25-year-old. Uh, he's not even that old. He's 23, isn't he? Let me look up. I don't even know how old De'Aaron Fox is. And I really should know that. Uh, but he doesn't look his age. He doesn't look like someone who just started his second contract in the NBA. Aaron Fox's age, 23 years old. That's what I thought, 24, 25. Please, he's not even there yet. But he looks like he's playing like he's 30 plus. It's disappointing. It's surprising. And then you talk about areas of his game that we know needed to improve. The three-point shooting, it's regressed, of course, and we know how important the three-point shot is to, to De'Aaron's success as a basketball player offensively. The free throw shooting. I know the NBA has changed rules about what's a foul and what's not, costing players like De'Aaron to get to the line less than they did last season. But even when he gets there, he's still shooting at like a 70% clip. He's not taking advantage. And then there's defense. I know De'Aaron Fox is capable of being a good defender. His days of being a great defender, I think, are gone. He can have moments of great defense, but his possibility of being a great defender, no. But De'Aaron is capable of being a good defender when he wants to be. And that's the point. When De'Aaron commits to that end of the floor, he's good. He's solid. He gets the job done. But this season, more than any other season, we've seen De'Aaron not commit to that end of the floor. Standing straight up with arms at his sides defensively. Not giving maximum effort. Not giving minimum effort. Just there. And what I think is interesting is probably the most consistent thing that we've gotten out of De'Aaron in his press conferences, which I've, I've told you before, and you've seen and heard some of them here on Locked on Kings. He just, he's, he's disconnected. He's clearly not happy. And look, I've covered De'Aaron every single year that he's been in the league. I've talked to him personally. I've talked to him in person uh, during media scrums, just privately one-on-one. -on -one. De'Aaron has never had the attitude around the media that he has this year. And I don't think it's a, hatred of the media thing. I think it's a compilation of frustrations with everything that's going on. I think he is very much aware of people in the fan base who are starting to turn against him a little bit, the criticisms that he's facing. I'm sure he's frustrated with himself, with his own issues, his own struggles. De'Aaron has never been as anti-media as he appears to be this season. And look, I know there's a natural distrust of the media with some players, naturally, because some media members like to use those players and use their faults to to sell stories and 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 to 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 turn a profit, which I I never agreed with, never thought that was a good thing. But I know that exists, and players are wary of that. But what De'Aaron has said consistently in his press conferences is, "Oh, we just need to do this. We just need to do that better." And he's not really saying anything. He's being captain obvious. Like, of course you need to play better defense. But if you're going to say you need to play better better defense, but you're the one not playing it, like we call De'Aaron the head of the snake for the reason, and already that that has. Kings fans rolling their eyes. They're tired of that term. And that was very much a Luke Walton term. But let's let's say it like this. De'Aaron Fox leads this team. This team responds to how De'Aaron Fox plays. His leadership, who he is. If he's not going to be a vocal leader, which we know he isn't, he's a leader by example. What example is he setting for the rest of the team if he's standing straight up on the perimeter and allowing himself to be blown by and scored on on a nightly basis? Like we know the Kings perimeter defense was bad last season. He of course was a part of that, but we put that more on Buddy Heald. We put that more on and anybody but De'Aaron. We knew De'Aaron wasn't great defensively, but he had moments and he could have been solid. But we also made the excuse for him of, man, he, he has such a heavy workload offensively. Like it's, it's only natural that he takes some plays off defensively. 
That excuse isn't there this year, and, and that excuse maybe never should have been there to begin with. De'Aaron is just not playing well defensively at all. And then you have Tyrese Halliburton, who is not as good of a defender, who Luke Walton admitted that the Kings tried to hide defensively last season, and they're not doing that as much this season. Tyrese is a very smart defender. He likes to jump passing lanes, come up with steals, and he knows the right play to make. He can't always execute it. But the concerns with Tyrese offensively is the fact that he's one of the best shooters on this Kings team. He's shooting like 37% from the from three-point range this season, and he's refusing to shoot the ball. Like, we know passive Tyrese Halliburton and, and not as aggressive as, as the team wants. That's been probably the biggest criticism with Tyrese. But there have been way too many times in these recent games where he's had the ball on the perimeter and he's passed up a, a good shot. Maybe not a great shot. And I know he's a pass-first point guard. He has the purest of intentions. It's not that he's just afraid to shoot the basketball. He's trying to swing the ball around to get maybe an even better shot for Buddy Heald or Harrison Barnes in the corner or at the wing. I get it. But you also need to have confidence in yourself to shoot that shot. And he looks hesitant. And that's concerning for a player that we have such high expectations for as the second or third best player of a Kings core who will hopefully be in the playoffs and maybe one day competing for a championship. Of course, he's only in his second season, not even close to his prime, so it's a long way to go. So we're not trying to overreact too much to things. But that concern is there. All right, I'm going to delay uh, that trade conversation uh, for one more segment. I got to get that, another ad read in here. But remember, six players, De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald, Davion Mitchell, uh, Marvin Bagley, and Harrison Barnes. Rank those uh, players who you'd most like to see traded or who you would most actively try and trade versus uh, who you uh, would, would try and hold on to out of those six. Uh, we'll visit those and talk about those in the next segment. Right now, though, I want to let you know today's episode of Locked on Kings brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online, They have you covered all season long, more props, more odds, more lines than ever before with football season continuing, basketball season really now getting underway. Playoffs going to be here sooner than we realize. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today. Receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. All you have to do is use promo code Locked On, all one word, to get that bonus. It's free money for you to gamble with. From basketball to football, NHL hockey, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite at Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. We talked way too much recently about coaching changes. What's done is done. Luke Walton's no longer here. Alvin Gentry is. He's the interim head coach. We'll see if he gets an opportunity to remove that interim tag or if the Kings go on a aggressive head coach search next summer. But that's that's a distant problem to figure out. His Kings team still has problems right now to deal with. And as we talked about on a recent podcast last week, I said, look, this Kings core doesn't work. This Kings team for the most part has been the same over the last three years. It's time to break it up. It's time to make some changes. So if you're going to make some changes, the best way to do that, the only way really to do that is through the trade market here as the trade deadline gets closer and closer. Now we're still a, a couple of months away. A lot of things can change. A lot of context can change. Value can go up. Value can drop. But as of right now, I believe the Kings need to make a move. And I don't know if they can afford to wait to the trade deadline to make that move. It also feels like the rest of the NBA is kind of like on standby waiting for what happens with Ben Simmons in Philadelphia, right? And maybe the Kings are still involved in those sweepstakes. Who knows? But if they need to change this core, they obviously need to trade away some of their core. And if they're trading away some of their core, they're hoping to get some kind of value back. I imagine that value is less in draft picks this year as it is in playable talent that will help this team accomplish their goal of making the playoffs. So the six names that I listed, De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald, Davion Mitchell, Harrison Barnes, and Marvin Bagley. I would argue three or four of those six would have been deemed untradeable or, or pretty much untouchable at the start of the season. Now I'd say all six are, are available, truly. So how would you rank those six out of most likely to be traded or most you would want to be traded versus who you want to hold on to? Here's how my list kind of shakes out. And this is kind of a rough draft list, if I'm being honest. Marvin Bagley is at the very top to me. I've been trying to move Marvin Bagley for a while. I still don't know what kind of value he has, even if he's playing a little bit better now uh, under Alvin Gentry. Marvin's still at the top. Buddy Heald is right behind him. 
I like Buddy. I understand that he has a, a, a valuable skill set with his three point shooting, but I think the Kings and Buddy Heald are not a good mix for one another. Buddy Heald doesn't work with this core, even if it's coming off the bench. I, I just think Buddy Heald needs needs a change of scenery, and the Kings need to try and get some value for him. And I do believe there is value out there for Buddy, especially with his contract going down a couple million dollars uh, every single year. So Buddy Heald's number two for me. Davion Mitchell's number three, and. It's a it's it's hard to put expectations on a rookie. Offensively, he hasn't been good. Defensively, we had such high expectations for him. And early on in the season, he had those moments, right? He was getting fans excited with the defensive intensity that he was playing with. Uh, he had that moment of, of stripping Davion Mitchell in the home opener, right? Has he done anything like that really since? He hasn't had any major moment that made me go, wow, there's that Davion Mitchell that we talked about. And maybe we were already taking Mitchell's intensity and effort defensively for granted, but we're not talking about that anymore. We're not seeing it anymore. And maybe because from a team perspective, that kind of defensive intensity was not sustainable. So as good as Davion Mitchell is defensively, offensively, there are major gaps in his game. We're seeing that. He's one of the worst shooters in the NBA as of right now. So is De'Aaron Fox. So. He's number three for me. And I honestly don't know what value he he has. Maybe he's included uh, in, a, in a big trade. Maybe that one that involves Buddy Heald or Marvin Bagley or both. I don't know. Number four for me. This is where things get tough. And I understand that my list is going to be very different from a lot of others and that people are probably not going to like this. Number four for me is Tyrese Halliburton. And I'll tell you why. I like Tyrese a lot. I think Tyrese still has tremendous opportunity and capability of being a very, very, very good NBA player and being an important player for the Sacramento Kings. I'm not saying that the Kings should actively be shopping him, but I am willing to see the Kings move on from Tyrese Halliburton more at this point than I am both De'Aaron Fox and Harrison Barnes. Tyrese's fear or inability to step up and, and, and really look for his game offensively is concerning, especially if he's going to be one of your top guys. I know he is easily the best playmaker and passer on this team right now, but he, he, that's where he is on the list for me right now. I think he's going to get better offensively. I'm not actively, like I said, looking for the Kings to trade him, but he's above De'Aaron Fox and Barnes for me. And that's how the order goes for these final two. Then it's Fox, and then Barnes is at the very bottom. The reason why Harrison Barnes is at the very bottom is because historically been a very difficult position for the Kings to fill. I don't know if you can get too much better than what you're getting consistently out of Harrison Barnes from a leadership perspective and just an on-floor starter perspective. Of course, he's hurt right now. But Harrison Barnes is very important to this Kings team. I don't want to see the Kings losing that value by any means. And then De'Aaron Fox just one step above him. For the record, I'm not trying to move De'Aaron Fox right now, but I'm certainly a lot more open to the idea of trading him uh, than I was during the offseason. So let me know your order of that six. Uh, I would love to hear that. And uh, be sure to send those to me via Twitter uh, at Matt George Sack. You can email me Matt George Sports at gmail.com or leave those six down uh, in the comment section down below. Appreciate your support here on the pod. Uh, Locked on Kings, believe it or not, had its best week ever last week. Humongous week, which I'm so thankful for. So much so that I had people from the network, high ups on, uh, on the network, executives reaching out to me saying, Man, whatever you're doing, keep it up. You're doing it right. And I know there was some big news with the coaching changes and some bad losses during that week. Overall, it was more of a negative week. So I appreciate your support, even if the content was negative. I want the content to be more positive. I hope you stick around. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. Can't wait for you to join me on tomorrow's podcast after the Kings and Lakers game. Hopefully the Kings will beat the Lakers again and we'll feel a little bit better. After that Memphis loss, I'll be at that game. So if you're going, reach out, let me know. I'd love to see you. Uh, in person and say hi and chat with you a little bit. But until the next episode, my name is Matt George. Appreciate your support once again. You have been listening to Locked On Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.